You know, nothing says maths quite like a three-person pistol duel between A, B, and C, where the exact accuracy of all sharpshooters involved is known. And we're looking at just such a situation today. We're going to solve a problem from the book 50 Challenging Problems in Probability from Frederick Mosteller. The problem has a pretty amusing solution, so let's take a look at it and you can pause the video and try solving it yourself before we get into the solution. Here it is. A, B, and C, our sharp shooters, are to fight a three-cornered pistol duel at high noon. All know that A's chance of hitting his target is 0.3, C's chance is 0.5, and B never misses. They are to fire at their choice of target in the order A, B, C, so politely they're taking turns here. A gets first shot, then B, then C. A hitman dies instantly, so if somebody hits another person, that person is dead, they're out of the game. The question then is what should A's strategy be? Again, remember that the accuracies are known to all, so the analysis that we conduct with all of this information, this info is known by everyone. Now, you may be wondering about the practicality of bothering with a problem like this. I mean, were these famous pistol duels really a thing? Well, record shows that actual quick draw pistol duels were extremely rare. They've been popularized in old west genre fiction, but unsurprisingly, most gun involved interactions were more like drunken brawls, sudden, organic, and not following the code duello. However, there were some notable duels throughout history. Indeed, all math nerds know the tale of a Luke Short and long hair Jim. You see, Jim ran an agency giving protection two saloons, and Luke Short owned a saloon, and so naturally Jim wanted his business. But Short told long-haired Jim to go to hell, and that any business he had to settle, he could settle via the art of gunslinging. Then, on February 8th of 1887, these two got in a bit of an argument. They drew their pistols at close range, Luke Short got the first shot off, and in the end, long-haired Jim took five bullets and passed away. Of course, in our problem, if someone's hit, they'll die instantly, so that's a bit of a concession to reality for our mathematical abstraction. In any event, setting aside our lollygagging, let's get into this problem's solution. Here stand A, B, and C, our sharpshooters, and you may think disappointedly that this is a heck of a step down from Luke Short and Long Hair Jim. But what you don't know is that A stands for arsonist Alexander, B stands for bloody butcher Bridget, and C stands for Cutthroat Carl. But for convenience, we will call them A, B, and C. And here's their probabilities of making a shot. These, of course, were given in the problem. And remember, the order in which shots will be taken is A, and then B, and then C, so proceed along those arrows. And if an individual is vanquished, then the remaining two will simply alternate. But no matter what, they are taking turns, politely. Now remember, the question's asking us to figure out what A's strategy should be, and A is the one who gets first shot. So who should A try to shoot at? Well, B doesn't seem like someone you would want to upset, but they're already in a gunfight, so I suppose that bridge has been crossed. A might consider consider shooting at C, but the issue is if A actually hits C, well then A is the only one remaining when B takes a shot, and so B is going to shoot at A, and guaranteed A will die. So A stands to gain nothing by shooting at C. Thus, it seems the only choice that remains is A shoots at B. Now what happens from there, of course, depends. Let's say that A actually hits B. If A hits B, well then she has been vanquished, and A and C will proceed to take turns blasting each other. Let us then calculate the probability of A surviving in that situation. The thing is, there are quite a few ways that could happen. One possibility is that C misses A with his first shot, there's a 0.5 chance that happens, and then A makes it with the very next shot, which has a 0.3 probability of happening, and so then A survives. But of course, it's more likely that A misses his next shot, in which case the only way A survives is that C misses that first shot he takes, and then 
A misses his shot. There's a 0.7 probability of that happening. And then C misses his next shot also, which has a 0.5 probability of happening. And then A makes his next shot, which has a 0.3 probability of happening. Notice from here to here, we just introduced a factor of 0.5 and a factor of 0.7. That's representing one occurrence of A missing a shot at C and then C missing a shot at A. But of course, that can happen as many times as we could imagine. So allow me to cross out this sum just so that we can write this more generally in a nicer manner. Here are all the possible ways A could survive being added up. It could be that C misses and then A makes his very first shot at C. However, it could be that between C's first miss and A finally hitting C, they exchange misses or they could exchange misses twice, which is why we see 0.7 times 0.5 squared here, or they could exchange misses three times. This of course would continue. This exponent could be anything, and we have to add up all of those terms because those are all probabilities of events that could happen. They could miss each other any number of times. Because this is an infinite sum, it's what we call a series. And notice how every term in the series is just the previous term multiplied by an additional factor of 0.7 times 0.5. Multiply this by 0.7 times 0.5, we get there. Multiply by 0.7 times 0.5 again, we get here, and so on. Hence, this is an example of a geometric series, a very well-known type of infinite sum. In particular, we would say this is a geometric series with r equal to 0.35. That's the common ratio between the terms, 0.35, which is 0.7 times 0.5. That's what we're multiplying each term by to get the next one. And the fact that r is 0.35 is good news for us. In order for a geometric series to actually have a definite value, the magnitude of r has to be less than one. When this condition is satisfied, the value of the geometric series is the first term, often denoted a, divided by one minus that ratio r. So in our case, the first term is 0.5 times 0.3, which is 0.15. And then we just divide by one minus the ratio r. So divide by one minus 0.35, that's the same as 0.65. And if you divide the numerator and denominator by 0.05, this is actually the same as three over 13. So this is A's probability of surviving if he actually manages to hit B with that first shot. Of course, those odds aren't very good, which isn't surprising since killing B puts A in a standoff with C, who is quite a bit more accurate. However, A is not very likely to hit B. There's only a 30% chance that happens, the other 70% of the time, A would fail to hit B. And let's see what happens in that case. The case of A missing B is actually quite a bit simpler because B is a guaranteed shot. B is basically the Luke short in this situation. So if A misses B, now it's B's turn. And what's she going to do? Well, A doesn't present much of a threat due to that low 0.3 accuracy probability. So B is going to take a shot at C and guarantee that will be the end of cutthroat Carl. And that would leave A with one opportunity to take a shot at B before B sends A to the shadow realm. So if A misses B, then the likelihood of A surviving is just 0.3, the probability that A makes that next shot at B. If A doesn't make this shot, then it's guaranteed A will die. So returning to the question, what should A's strategy be? Well, we already determined that A shouldn't shoot at C because A stands to gain nothing by doing that. And as for shooting at B, the two possibilities are A misses B, which leaves A with a 0.3 probability of survival, or A actually hits B, which after running the numbers, we see leaves A with a three over 13 probability of survival. Now, if you're quick with your number sense, you probably know how three over 13 and 0.3 compare. Three over 13 is roughly 0 0.23. In other words, it's less than 0.3. So in fact, 
A, missing his first shot is objectively the better strategy. So instead of leaving that miss up to chance, A should simply shoot at the ground and let B dispatch C. That then guarantees that A has the first shot at B. And that's how we find the optimal strategy for A. Shooting at C makes no sense because if C is killed, then B will kill A. But shooting at B doesn't make sense either because if B is killed, then C gets the first shot at A. Of course, C isn't a guaranteed hit, but it's still not an advantageous situation. Since B knows that C is a bigger threat than A, A should deliberately miss his first shot so that B will dispatch C, and then A is guaranteed to have the first shot at B with no other threats remaining. Pretty cute little probability problem. I'll leave a link in the description to the book with all of those challenging probability problems that this is from if you want to take a look at that. Also, check out my math fashion brand, mathshin.com, for the coolest math clothes ever created. This is the Tomei's Function Under Armour t-shirt. It is super cool. Links in the description, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling art to keep the cable cut and untucked the table If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull my brain and push it all the way through the whole blue planet Faded Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so